Hey everybody, welcome back to Monroe Live. I'm here with Jordan. And uh, today what we're looking at the electric uh, photographs that they got from uh, somebody who found, <laughs> who found a, a Tesla Cybertruck sitting at the side of the road. We never get that opportunity here at Monroe. We, we look at the side of the road and we just haven't seen one of them laying around. Um, so anyway, um, what we're looking at here is, um, is uh, basically the front suspension. Uh, we can see that there's a casting back here and um, not much else. It looks pretty pretty standard to me. You see anything? Yeah, I mean, just a few observations. So it looks like a low pressure, um, either a low pressure, like a permanent mold type of die cast or a sand casting, right? It's hard to see all the witness marks to get confirmation, but these cross hatches, right, help that casting cool and release from the mold. Um, but the one thing that's indicative to me in looking at this and stating that it is a prototype is, if you look at this, these are the inner and outer tie rods. So the thing that connects to the steering rack underneath the vehicle. So the outboard one or the OTR, out, outside tie rod end, this forged aluminum piece goes into this, which this is the indicative piece of a prototype. This it looks like a billet machined yeah. uh, piece of steel, right? So why would you do that? And a prototype, it's because you can do it off of bar stock. You don't need right. to have a tool set up to do it. You can put it on a lathe, do a secondary machine pass, and voila, you've got a tie rod. Yeah, the little flat right here is the wrench flat. Right. So at the end of the day, um, again, um, this doesn't look extraordinary, this picture. I would suggest that uh, we could see a lot of these different uh, products that are in the marketplace right now that, uh, that would look very, very similar to this. Go to the next one. This episode of Monroe Live is brought to you by Joa. Joa is the world's leading provider of Tesla accessories, brought to you by a team with over 15 years of experience, engineering highly specialized accessories for automobiles, power charging, and lifestyle. Joa has everything you didn't know you needed for your Tesla, like these all-weather floor liners that are the perfect fit for your vehicle. The anti-skid backing with hook and loop fasteners won't block the accelerator or brake pedal, making for a seamless addition to your vehicle. The foldable car tray is designed to fit the Model 3 and Model Y front seats, providing a comfortable space for working or mealtime. The foldable hinges makes this feature easy to open and the foldable function allows for easy storage in your frunk. The tray also fits perfectly into the all-weather trunk liners, which have raised edges to help protect your storage areas from dirt, mud, rain, and snow. Created for Tesla owners by Tesla owners, these products are developed by the Joa team to enhance your Tesla driving experience. View the entire catalog of Joa products at joalife.com. And for a limited time, use code MONROEJOA for 5% off your order. Okay, so this is a better view of that same casting. We're looking at the front uh, suspension here. Um, and again, pretty much everything looks pretty conventional. Uh, but we did say, or actually Jordan and I were just talking a second ago, um, we're gonna go to the rear in a second and it's gonna be made out of steel. And uh, our speculation on this is that um, Going to a casting is there for SORB, right? Yeah, it could be a SORB enabler, right? So a lot of OEMs in the front, if you're not familiar with SORB, it's small overlap rigid barrier, where 25% of the vehicle's width is gonna contact at, you know, just over 30 miles an hour, a rigid barrier. And so the reason that folks will put, you know, aluminum in the front corner here is because they want this wheel during the impact event to peel away from the vehicle. If this stays rigidly connected to the vehicle, what happens is, is this whole wheel and tire gets trapped in that wheel envelope and it starts to load up the hinge pillar going into the occupant home. And so we've seen folks use this as a strategy to help fracture this whole corner node of the suspension and get that out of the path, right? You don't want um, hard objects, but rather free crush space in an event like that. So it could be that they're doing it for that, could be light weighting, um, could also be feature integration or a combination therein, but um, definitely a, aluminum in the front. Well, I know that um, that's the primary reason for using aluminum. And, uh, and the reason you don't use steel is because steel's malleable. And in a crash, it, uh, it doesn't break away properly. 
it, um, it actually bends and that uh, puts the occupants in a sorb kind of situation in jeopardy. Yeah, absolutely. I don't see anything else here, do you? Uh, the oh, one, the carbon was, fiber. Yeah. yeah, the one thing is we saw this and I was kind of surprised to see this. They've got a carbon shield, looks like at the leading edge of the battery pack supplemented by a steel structure above it, um, which is probably decking that front suspension module where this control arm's tying into. But they went with carbon underneath, right? So it's it's interesting. It's a costly choice depending on how you do it. Um, it depending on the volumes, it could actually be less costly, right? It, it's really volume and how you actually lay up the carbon fiber that's going to determine the cost. Well, this this would probably be sheet molded compound. I don't think they'd right. lay this up. Right. Um, so, but anyway, um, it's kind of kind of interesting. Next one. Okay, so here we are at the rear of the. Uh, the rear of the um, uh, product. And um, Jordan pointed out something that surprised the daylights out of me because I, I wasn't aware of that feature. And this is for rear wheel steering. So you wanna jump into that, Jordan? Yeah, so this just caught my eye, right? And, and obviously we're now starting to get into Cybertruck territory in preparation um, for the vehicle arriving, but this is a ball joint. You only have a ball joint and a rear knuckle and a, and a multi-link suspension like this. Um, if you've got to pivot that, right? So ball joints allow that knuckle to pivot, which is indicative that it is indeed four wheel steer. So we've seen obviously the press images of this vehicle having the four wheel steer tight turning radius, but this is one of the enablers, right? So on the, it looks like the opposing side, they've got a steering rack unit that's probably tying into the top end of that knuckle and steering from the rear. So and yeah. this is basically just two stampings welded together yeah. Um, it's uh, light, cheap, and uh, for this application, probably a perfect choice. Yeah, the, the interesting thing going aluminum in the front, steel in the rear, we used to see folks do this back when uh, there was differentials galore in different cars, right? All these rear-wheel drive applications where in the front, they'd have an aluminum differential, and in the rear, they'd have a cast iron differential because they wanted better weight distribution. So. We've seen that in a similar sense applied to rear suspension systems or cradles where if you don't have a good 50-50 weight distribution front to rear, you start to go to steel. But, but as Sandy pointed out, from a cost and a mass perspective, it's actually very surprising when you actually look at the data when comparing like suspension systems to like suspension systems, the stamp steel clamshell welded um, strategy, which is what they have here, is among the lightest and definitely yeah. least costly. Yeah, it's usually a wash um, between aluminum and stamped steel. Um, it's, like I say, it's, it's a perfect uh, application for SORB for aluminum in the front, and this is a perfect application here. Yep. So last thing while we're on this slide is the debate over whether that other shield is carbon fiber or not. It's a grainy picture, so it's hard to, hard to really see. Hard to really yeah. tell. Yeah, it's hard to see. It could be like a textile PET, which is great for MVH, but at the rear of the vehicle, that wouldn't make much sense, right? You're not going to get a whole lot of noise transmission going through the bed into the cab. But similar to the front, it does look like there's an ever so slight witness of a crosshatch, which would be that like SMC carbon perhaps. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I'm interested to see what they did there. Overall, the carbon, it's good for like puncture resistance, definitely good for light weighting and stiffness. But Straight. Yeah, right. any 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 off-roading kind of an experience is going to be uh, that's going to give you a whole lot more protection if that is carbon fiber. Sure. Let's try the next one. So, <laughs> again, uh, we're looking at this is your air suspension system. It's kind of like uh, a little bit more like up upside down, sideways, whatever. Right. But at the end of the day, this is very very similar to pretty much every one of the more modern of the. Um, uh, of the trucks that are coming out. Everybody's going to uh, uh, air suspension. I mean, we worked on the Ram. That was the first one, I think. Yep. And, um, and on and on and on. Pretty much everybody's got it. Mar Rivian, the Rivian has it. And it's got, it gives you a lot of nice uh, qualities. You can kneel so you can bring the car down for getting in and out, bring it back up for different ride heights for off-roading or when you're going fast on the expressway you want to have as tight as you can to the ground load leveling um, for load trailer. leveling yeah, yeah for trailers yeah yeah no it's it's great and then the other 
you know, sort of marquee off-roading element here is the shield around the bag, right? You get a puncture in that bag, you're going to go from a really nice ride to a really bad ride very quickly. <laughs> or no ride <laughs> or at no all. Or no ride, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So uh, let's try the next one. Uh, it's like a little bit more of the same. I don't see anything here that jumps right out at me. Yeah, um, yeah just more parts to the, the strut, yeah. right? Right. So th this on the side here part of the adaptive nature of the air, right? So often these will be either vents, right? One-way valves, things like that to allow air in and out. But one thing did catch my eye, and if you go back to the other image, yeah, right here, we see a glimpse of some of those oh, giant, that casting. beautiful castings yeah. that we always point out, right? So That's true. Probably, probably part of the giga casting. Um, um, well, that, it's hard to say, but that, it's it's part of the gate casting, whether it's front or rear or not, I don't know. But And then I think the last thing that caught my eye is these orange cables, right? So these are probably the high voltage cable cables running likely from inverter to battery, or maybe the charge cables. It's hard to get a grasp on the packaging here. But the thing that I find interesting is we've got an airbag here. There's an aluminum shield around it. We've got high voltage cables running underbody. Most OEMs out there would cover this completely. They would shield it, yeah, especially looking, in an off-road application. I'm looking at this. I, I don't know whether somebody took a shield off or something, but that's obviously a track for the um, for the uh, high voltage. I'm wondering... It might be a stud on the body, right? Often these get pushed over, so the stud But there's goes no through. nut or anything. Yeah. I, I, we, we would have seen something. Anyhow, at the end of the day, um, there might be more going on here, or we think that this is definitely a prototype. <laughs> Um, and sometimes prototypes don't, uh, they don't, <laughs> they don't get all of the parts. So anyway, let's try the next one. Oh, we already here. Next one. Okay. So this, I'll go ahead. You can, uh, yeah. So what it looks like, and obviously this is grainy, doesn't even do it justice, but this, this photo looks like it's in the rear suspension. And this is either like a camber link or a tow link or yeah, what more camber. specifically. Yeah. It's probably the rear tie rod. So when we talk about the rear steering system, this is likely the rear tie rod. You see you've got these what are called jam nuts on either side. And then in the center here, as you rotate this one direction, it'll bring these two closer. Rotate it the other direction, it'll separate them out. So as you're aligning um, and or you want different properties from your suspension geometries, this is going to help with that. And then the jam nuts, once you get it where you want it, cinch those down like the front and they're not going anywhere. So... Um... The one thing that's unique about this type of a product, it's got right and left hand threads. So on one side, you'll have a normal thread. The other side is going to have a left hand thread and the left hand thread will allow you when you're cranking that center. So that's what makes it go in and out. So yeah. uh, next yeah. one. And oh, that's a here we are. That's a better picture of the same thing. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Going into that ball joint, like we talked about aluminum knuckles. Right. Next. Okay. Is that it? Yep. Well, there you go. Okay, so that's our little assessment on, uh, on what's going on with the uh, pictures here of the Cybertruck. Uh, stay tuned for more um, Monroe Live uh, with ho hopefully uh, Jordan and I uh, talking about something even more um, exciting than this. <laughs> okay, thanks a lot. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.